The Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, is with us in studio. Prime Minister, welcome back to The Current. Good to be back, Matt. Glad to have you here. It feels a bit like an election campaign. You're zipping across the country here and there, uh, announcing things with uh, big dollar signs attached to them. Well, we got a big budget coming out, and it's one that's focused on the fact that far too many young people, particularly millennials and Gen Z, uh, don't feel like the system works for them anymore. Mm. Even if they have a great job, uh, they are squeezed on housing, they're squeezed on rent, they can't save up for buying a home, they're pressed on groceries, they're seeing a world where climate change is getting worse and worse, they're worried about their future, and government has a role in, in making sure that there is fairness for them. Let me talk about that in a minute. Um, I want to begin with the news of the week in some ways, which is still the carbon tax. No matter what else you seem to speak about, um, people are focused on, on the price on carbon. Um, we have seen an increase up to, what, $80 per ton this week. A liter of gas now costs three cents more. Do you think you've made a convincing case to Canadians that that increase is a good thing? Well, I think we can put the case aside for a second and let's talk about the actual policy. But the case matters because it people are protesting, wondering whether this of actually works Of course the case matters, but let's make sure we're talking about the same thing. We designed a price on pollution in this country that gives more money back to average Canadians, to 8 out of 10 Canadian families, particularly middle-income and low-income people. So we're not only fighting climate change, we're putting more money in the pockets of folks who need it through the Canada Carbon Rebate. That's, that's, the, that's the framework we built with all premiers working together back in 2016. Do you think you've made that case? Oh, I think we're continuing to make that case. It's understandable that at a time of anxiety, of pressure on costs, of affordability concerns, uh, that some politicians are trying to you know, drum up support for themselves by scaring people and by giving misinformation. It's unfortunate, but we're going to continue telling the truth. So just to be clear, you don't think you've lost the narrative on this. We had a conversation this week with somebody who's a defender of the carbon tax. He explained it. He talked it, about it as a dumpster fire in terms of how it's rolled out. You don't think you've lost the narrative on this? Well, I think what we've actually done in the policy... It is helping Canadians. Now, the fact that conservative premiers or, or the conservative leader of the opposition wants to take away those supports for Canadians, uh, that's something that people need to hear. And that's not something that they're talking about. So we're continuing to talk about the fact that they have no plan to fight climate change and no plan to keep supporting people with affordability. Of course, it's not just conservative premiers, though. It's Wab Canoe in uh, Manitoba. It's a fellow liberal in Andrew Fury in Newfoundland and Labrador. What would it take for them to convince you that this is not the right policy? Well, they have the opportunity to put forward a pricing frame that makes sure that pollution isn't free at the same level for the rest of the country, but in a way that works for their province if they don't want to have the federal backstop. Indeed, a number of provinces started with that. BC and Quebec still have it. Ontario actually only has the carbon tax because Doug Ford got rid of the cap and trade system. So as he rails against uh, the price on pollution and the rebate we're giving to Ontario, he's actually responsible directly for it because he scrapped the Made in Ontario pricing plan they had. So Andrew Fury has said that he wants a meeting with you to talk about this. He wants the premiers to come together with you. Will you have that meeting? I've, I had a meeting in 2016. Will with you have the, will you have the meeting this. now with I will continue to talk with premiers, but I will continue to be pressing Andrew and all others on the actual facts that we have a plan to fight climate change that puts more money back in the pockets of Canadians that need it. One of the reasons why there's great anxiety over this is because, as you've said, there are a lot of people who feel like the system is stacked against them. Young people in particular, they do everything they can. They get a good job. They're working hard. They can't square that circle. You've had nine years in power. To what extent is your government responsible for the fact that that system is stacked against them? Uh, we got elected in, in 2015 focused on supporting the middle class and we brought in a number of measures that made a huge difference. We cut child poverty in half in this country with the Canada Child Benefit. But particularly since the, uh, the pandemic, we've seen uh, things get so much more difficult for so many people, particularly the young people who've been my motivation since I got into politics 15 years ago. So investing in them, supporting them as renters, making sure there's a pathway for them to buy, uh, buy a home, making sure that they're confident that uh, the world's not going to be on fire uh, when they're adults and raising their own kids so we fight climate change. These things matter.